Today we're going to be looking at a big overview of the next time period in history that we study, the Industrial Era, which started around the 1750s, so just before the political revolutions of the early modern period, and will end around 1914, when World War I begins. The Industrial Era was defined by one event that was the cause for every other topic of study in this unit, and that was the Industrial Revolution, which was an economic revolution that completely changed patterns of life, work, and production, first in England, then in the broader Western world, and gradually worldwide. In 1750, most people in Europe lived on small farms and produced most of what they needed by hand. A century later, many people lived in cities, and most of their needs were produced by complex machines using steam power. The Industrial Revolution describes this change. It began in Great Britain, then spread to Belgium, France, Germany, and the United States, and Japan. And it was a fundamental change in the way goods were produced and altered the way that people had been living, patterns of life that had been in place for centuries before. This revolution was built on an economic philosophy called capitalism which describes a system that organizes the economy towards the goal of private businesses earning profits. This system operated without any regulation whatsoever at the beginning and predictably was disastrous for the working poor. The awful working conditions in factories led to the creation of trade unions to lobby for better working conditions and also did new economic philosophies that would continue to be influential in the world. First, socialism, um, an economic philosophy with the goal of leveraging a nation's ability to produce wealth to benefit the people of the nation, not just profits for private businessmen. And communism, a radical version of socialism that uh, promotes the idea that the worker should stage a revolution to take over the means of production, the, the things that we need in order to produce goods in society and share in the wealth equally instead of being paid essentially pittance wages, poverty wages for a fair day's work to profit somebody else. The Industrial Revolution had huge positive effects and huge negative effects, all of which we're still feeling. It included advancements in power, transportation and communication changes in science and technology that vastly accelerated during the 1800s until every aspect of human life was affected, starting with the steam engine, which facilitated the movements of good and people, powering railroads, steamships, speeding the pace of human transport and cultural diffusion in the process, and advances in science and medicine, which led to an improved quality of life and longer lifespans. It's not all good stuff, however because the Industrial Revolution is fundamentally built on making products in factories, and to make products, you need raw materials. Western nations seeking raw materials to fuel industrial production launched a wave of imperial conquests, carving up most of the globe amongst themselves. Eventually, the system of competition for imperial power became a competition between the great powers of Europe and the industrial capacity to mass produce weapons of increasing lethality would lead to one of the first total wars in history, certainly one of the most devastating wars in history, the First World War. So this is what we're going to be looking at, the sequence of events. Um, and in doing so, we're going to be talking about both what happened back then and how all of the topics from back then continue to affect the world today. Because we're looking at a change, I suggest you set up your notes in a T-chart or a complicated T-chart. Most simply, just have a column for before and after. But if you want to really master the material, make sure to note what caused each change, what caused the before to be different from the after. And if you want to look ahead, try to listen for effects as well. Starting with the before. The pre-industrial economy should look rather familiar to you. It's the way that economies had been set up for quite some time throughout our study of history. During the time of the political revolutions of the early modern period, 
most world civilizations operated on agrarian economies. That means farming, living in the countryside, working on a farm. And daily life changed very little and very slowly for Europeans. Most people still lived as peasants in the countryside and were engaged in farming or crafts making using the same tools that people had been using for generations. Most people were illiterate. Most people lived on a subsistence level with little to no savings and buying even one piece of clothing was considered a luxury. Society typically depended on peasants for food and taxes, a percentage of personal income paid to the nobles or to the government. The population didn't grow much from generation to generation, and poverty, war, plague, and poor hygiene resulted in high death rates. Wealth was concentrated in the hands of the few, while poverty was very common. The Industrial Revolution completely altered this pattern of life for so many people. During the time of the American Revolution, changes in production were slowly taking place in England that would transform the world economy in the Industrial Revolution. Starting around the 1750s, new inventions allowed producers to manufacture goods using machines instead of human labor. This mechanization of industry became known as the Industrial Revolution. At its core, an Industrial Revolution occurs when a society shifts from using tools to make products to using new sources of energy, like coal, to power machines and factories. It's a shift from the home to the factory as the site of production, from the countryside to the city, from human or animal power, so like muscle power, to using engines powered by fossil fuels, like coal and later oil. The industrial process occurred gradually but the social and economic changes were so far reaching over generations that looking back, it becomes clear that they are nothing short of revolutionary. This revolution began in England and then spread to the other countries in Northern and Western Europe and the United States, resulting in significant social, political and economic changes. Just as adopting farming in the Neolithic revolution around 10,000 BCE, led to the division of labor and permanent changes to the basic structure of human society. So did the re Industrial Revolution, but perhaps more dramatically. In other words, the Industrial Revolution benefited what we call the Western world first and only very slowly affected other regions. And it's a process that plays out in different places at different times. So what was it? Fundamentally, the Industrial Revolution describes a process of change in how goods are produced, in which machines replace muscle power. This relies on inventions such as the steam engine, which is the drawing that's moving on the side, and the cotton gin, which is like the wooden box looking thing on top of it, which then led to the rise of factories and the factory system, assembly line production which then led to the creation of businesses and companies in the form that we're familiar with today. As a result, mass production of goods became possible where you could produce increasing numbers of the same product for much, much less money and with much, much less labor put into it. The diversity of goods increased because production became easier. The factory system of production based on the assembly line and the division of labor became common. And because factories all have to be built somewhere, they tend to be built in cities, we see massive rural to urban migration, something called urbanization, because people would leave their farms to go work in cities. This is the moment that also leads to the rise of capitalism, that economic system that aims to seek profits for business owners first and foremost because you need capital, you need money kicking around to invest in order to build these huge factories and huge machines. As a result of this change in production, the social hierarchy changed as well. So we have new socioeconomic classes with the working class, the industrial working class at the very bottom, the proletariat, if you want to call them that, um, a middle class, the bourgeoisie in the middle and the wealthy industrial class of capitalists who owned these factories and the machines at the very top. 
And it wasn't just about producing goods, because once you could mass produce things in factories, you could mass produce all kinds of things, including medicine, but also weapons. In other words, England went from being an agricultural society to an industrial urbanized capitalist society based on the economic philosophy of capitalism. Capitalism is an ideology that we're going to talk about a lot in this unit and probably after. It's a system in which all natural resources and the means of production, so like the things that you need in order to make final products, are privately owned by businessmen. And it emphasized profit seeking and competition as the main drivers of efficiency. It was an economic system built on the philosophy of an economics professor named Adam Smith. And at the very beginnings, it opened, it operated not just on a free market where government doesn't tell the businesses how to operate their business and doesn't set rules for them, but on a completely free market. They had a completely free hand in deciding how businesses operate. Um, and that complete freedom is referred to as laissez-faire. In order to fuel this production, however, industrialized nations needed raw materials. You need cotton to produce textiles, for example. And how better to get raw materials than to take the historical pattern of conquering other places and taking their stuff, imperialism, empire building. Western nations seeking raw materials to fuel this industrial production carved up much of the globe amongst themselves in this time period aided greatly by the ability to mass produce massively lethal weapons, like the machine gun, for example. This was horrible for the people who were conquered and exploited, clearly, and eventually over the long run will turn out pretty bad for Europeans themselves when the competition for empires, in part, along with other causes, um, comes back to their homeland in the form of World War I. So that's where this unit's going to end and we'll get there. In terms of connections to today, we still feel the effects of the changes involved in the Industrial Revolution and the moral issues that it raises. While we're tracing the history of a process that began in England before cameras were invented, the Industrial Revolution played out in different times at different places, and so we don't have like photographs or video of the initial transition, but we do know what it looks like in other places. Um, so we can look at that too, and the issues that it continues to raise in the process. Like pollution, for example. Industrialization depended on using carbon for fuel, which more developed countries don't use anymore because it's really dirty. So we can kind of have a look at what the skyline of these industrial cities might have looked at might have looked like at the time by looking at cities that continue to rely a lot on carbon today like beijing for example on the left you see a day with really high carbon pollution note how gray it is note how different it is from a regular blue clear skyline this is the kind of pollution that we're talking about with industrialization at the beginning so when you picture industrialized cities with massive working class populations. Picture them gray and, you know, just kind of dirty like this. Imagine the health consequences of having a skyline like this and breathing in all of these pollutants. <clears throat> and consider then the moral issues that even just the pollution issue raises. Do we have an obligation for future generations to cut this out? Because this pollution is one of those things that has been fueling climate change that we continue to feel the effects of. It's not just pollution, though. Um, huge inequalities developed as a result of the Industrial Revolution, not just within individual societies between the capitalists and the working class, but between different nations, um, specifically between nations that had industrialized which despite the pollution, enjoyed a greater standard of living, a higher standard of living than non-industrialized nations, which were not only less wealthy 
but also tended to be exploited or conquered by industrialized nations for their raw materials to continue to fuel industrialization. To give you an example of how big this change is, I'm gonna read you a little bit from a source by Niall Ferguson called The West and the Rest. In the year 1500, so around the early modern period, um, before the major waves of colonization in the New World had taken place, the future imperial powers of Europe accounted for about 5% of the world's land surface and at the most 16% of its population. And they're circled in pink on that map. By 1913, 11 Western empires controlled nearly three-fifths of all territory and population of the globe, and close to three-fourths, a staggering 74% of global economic output. Average life expectancy in England was nearly twice what it had been in India. Higher living standards in the West were also reflected in a better diet, even for agricultural labors, and taller stature, so they were, you know, taller even for the ordinary soldier and convict. So after the Industrial Revolution, huge changes in terms of power and standard of living. Civilization, as we have seen, is about cities. And by this measure too, the West has come out on top. In 1500, so back in the early modern period before huge waves of conquest of the New World, the biggest city in the world was Beijing in China, with a population between 600 and 700,000. Of the 10 largest cities in the world by that time, only one, Paris, was European, and its population numbered fewer than 200,000 inhabitants. London had perhaps five, uh, sorry, 50,000 people in it. Urbanization rates were also higher in North Africa and South America than they were in Europe. So very few gigantic cities in Europe compared to others worldwide. After the Industrial Revolution, however, things are different. By 1900, there had been an astonishing reversal. Only one of the world's 10 largest cities at the time was Asian, and it was Tokyo. With a population around 6.5 million, London was the global megalopolis. And so, having gotten some overview of the Industrial Revolution, its chain of effects, let's pause here and take some notes. First, we can look at causes. The scientific revolution and the rationalism, rationalization of society and emphasis on discovery that it promoted led to inventions that created the Industrial Revolution. This was a technological and an economic revolution. Technology, like the steam engine, changed the way that goods were produced um, and resources were generated, which makes it an economic revolution too. The Industrial Revolution itself describes a change in how goods were produced by using machines, that's the key word, to do work that people used to have to do by hand, a process called mechanization. Fundamentally, industrialization involves mechanization, which therefore means factories, which gives people the ability to mass produce products. Before the Industrial Revolution, there was an agrarian economy, most people working on farms, Goods were handmade, and transportation was by horse or by boat at the fastest. Then came the invention of the steam engine and mechanization in general, which means using machines to make stuff, which created an industrial economy where most work is done in factories. Mass production becomes possible using an assembly line and unskilled labor. The other big transition is in terms of where people lived. Before the Industrial Revolution, most people lived in the countryside. But then with the rise of the factory system, most people during and after the Industrial Revolution came to live in cities, a process called urbanization, the growth of cities. The effects of the Industrial Revolution were massive. You have mass production, so products are less expensive. However, you also have harsh working conditions because capitalism at the time didn't regulate anything about how businesses operated. So long hours, injuries were common, child labor was normal. Um, the factory system relied on unskilled labor, which made workers very replaceable, which created really high job insecurity. 
And remember that this was based on the system of pure capitalism, which is all about making profits for the business owner with no government regulations or rules on how to operate those businesses whatsoever. Another effect was rapid urbanization. So cities were built fast and lots of people moved to them fast, which created horrible living conditions for the working poor. These horrible living conditions and the horrible working conditions, however, led to the rise of reform movements, including socialism and communism, that aimed to try to improve the lives of the working poor to the extent that they could. Meanwhile, new infrastructure, like railroads and canals, sped up transportation, which increased cultural diffusion and reduced the cost of goods. And industrial economies, made finished products using raw materials that were increasingly acquired by colonization. But pause here, get this all in your notes, and you are good to go for the day.